Hi, my name is David Bergmanson, and for the August 23rd, 2021 edition of the World Weather Watcher, we're going to be looking at news stories from around the world this past week and the impact of climate change and to understand the weather data behind these stories. Over the last week, we've seen a variety of news stories that have documented the impact of extreme weather events around the world, be it conditions leading to flooding in North America, such as the case of Tennessee, or the hot temperatures of Athens, or looking at the forecast for states like Odisha in India. To help us understand these extreme weather events, we need to have a look at the weather data behind these stories. And so that's what we're going to dive into now. Now, when we look at the last 30 days, we have been talking about the impact of dry conditions in the western part of Canada, the United States, leading to wildfires and very difficult conditions for forest firefighters to control these fires. We've also been talking about relatively good growing conditions in Mexico uh, due to good rainfall there, as well as relatively good rainfall across western Africa to support farmers. And even though rainfall in much of India has been below normal, it still has been sufficient to support farmers in that part of the world. Now, when we look to the forecast for the next 15 days, we see that we do have some good rains along the border of Canada, the United States, but the Corn Belt will still be under some stress, and we're going to be talking about that shortly. We also, though, see good rains in the western provinces of Canada, so welcome news for forest firefighters there. We also see that good rainfall uh, across parts of Western Africa, as well as good rainfall through the southern part of China and through much of Southeast Asia. When we pivot to look at maximum temperature, we see that warm conditions are found in the northern part of the United States and the eastern part of Canada, above normal temperatures for the southern part of South America, especially Argentina, and warmer conditions for the central part of Africa, and then this corridor from North Africa extending up into Kazakhstan and central Russia. Slightly cooler than normal conditions in the forecast for the central part of Europe, with the exception of Spain and Italy. Now, when we look to the next 15 days, we see uh, cooler conditions emerging for the central part of uh, southern Canada, northern part of the United States. Also warmer than normal conditions for the Corn Belt of the U.S., cooler conditions for much of Mexico. And we also see warmer than normal conditions for the central part of Africa, slightly cooler than normal conditions for India that extends up through the central part of China and into Russia, while we see warmer conditions for Kazakhstan and central Russia and cooler than normal conditions for most of Europe, again with the exception of Italy. When we look at precipitation over the next 15 days, we see that this continued dryness along the western part of the United States is still a cause for concern for forest fire risk in this entire zone. However, for the rest of the world, we see reasonably good rains for agriculture across Mexico, the northern part of South America, West Africa, India, as well as through much of Europe. When we look at the ratio of precipitation over potential evapotranspiration, we see that over the last 30 days, the green areas indicate rain conditions have been sufficient to support rain-fed agriculture. We also see good growing conditions for farmers in the northern part of South America, West Africa, the central to northern part of India, as well as through much of Southeast Asia. that the, the northern part of India was experiencing a very good ratio of P over PT to support agriculture, but in the south, it was dry. And so the impact, for example, in the areas like Telangana uh, can be explained when we look to the weekly rainfall compared to the long-term normal. And for August, there was virtually no rainfall when there should have been rains. And this has led to water stress for crops in this part of southern India. When we look to areas even further south, when we go down to the northern part of Tamil Nadu, for example, this is an area that's very important for spice production. And here too, we see this gap in 
rainfall compared to the long-term normal. And so for both of these areas, having analytics like this helps state governments, different producer groups, and even international spice organizations better adapt and manage their production in light of these weather insights. When we have a look at the application of these dynamic agroecologies in the Corn Belt of the United States, we see that when we zoom into Iowa, the central part of Iowa that's been drier than normal, as well as the central part of Minnesota, we can easily map out areas where corn and soybean production will be impacted by lower than normal rainfall. And so this dynamic agroecology just allows us to zoom into areas that are potentially challenged by water stress, and then to drill in even further with weekly analytics to understand exactly what's going on and what can be done about it. When we look at Uganda, for example, we can see that over time, this critical ratio has been dropping from a value of approximately two, about 10 or 15 years ago, down to a value of 1.0, which is still sufficient for crops like corn, but it's dramatically lower than what farmers are used to. And so basically what we're able to do with these dynamic agroecologies is to flag areas where this lower than normal rainfall to support agriculture uh, can be mapped and therefore interventions targeted to help farmers adapt to these changing weather patterns. If analytics like this are of interest to you, I invite you to go to our adapter platform at apps.aware.com where you can start your weather analytics journey for free. Until next week, take care.